And thank you to the Forum of Business for my uh, invitation here today. Well, I've been asked to share my journey with you and give you some inspiration, and there'll be an opportunity to ask some questions later on. I go for the interview and I don't get the job. Well, you could imagine at the time, complete devastation. And I think it was when I started going for the other interviews, it really dawned upon me that I was never, ever going to work for anybody else again. I thought, that's it, I'm going to set up my own business. <coughs> what I decided to do, I thought I'd self-teach myself all the computer systems the doctors were learning, and I'd run these audits whilst I was doing my job. N again, something you're not supposed to do. So I go to marketing, and there is only me, and I present my big idea. And I didn't have a big company or anything, I had no one actually. But what I did have was a passion and belief. And before I'd walked out of that meeting, I got a contract for half a million pounds. I learned so much through that process, you know, what not to do. Um, I made lots of mistakes. But I tell you something, when you do make mistakes, you never, ever make them again. So I um, got the business going, employed staff, and actually ran it from my, business, my bedroom for a couple of years. Now, you know, we work in one in five practices. We work with primary care trust. We've increased our service portfolio. We made changes along the way um, and I'm, I'm still doing that today. I was invited to go on to a trade delegation of women to Mumbai in India and on one of the days we actually uh, spent a whole day with charities and for me that was the most inspirational day and on the plane on the way back I'm visualizing I'm thinking about the program Secret Millionaire I'm thinking if I ever had an opportunity I would definitely do that program again and I thought, what? You know, I shouldn't have turned it down. Anyway, about two weeks later, I get another phone call out of the blue to do this programme. And I knew this time I absolutely had to do it because I think it would force me to take the time out of the business. So um, I went to Ladywood, and this was an area which is a, a lot of gun crime, a lot of single parents. And again, uh, I was drawn to two organisations in particular. Um, one was called the Caris Neighbourhood Scheme and they were under a tower block and they needed funding for a new premises. And I went to open that in April and that was absolutely fantastic to see what the money had gone towards. Now obviously in the last 18 months everybody's been going through a really difficult time and I spent a lot of time with difficult entrepreneurs and had to make changes in my own business. But you know, if you're an entrepreneur, sometimes adversity really brings out the best in you um, and it challenges you to think differently and you have to and if you've got that passion you absolutely will so you will think differently about how you may deliver your services for example if you're delivering training you may deliver it in a, di a, dis in a different way it might become a book or you know different ways and you've got to keep up with the market research keep talking to your clients talking to them about their key needs never assume clients um, uh, are happy with your service or they may just pitch hold you for what you are delivering and forget that you, you can deliver a lot more and you need to be talking to them more. When you think hard enough, again, you know, there is, you're talking about business and sharing, there is a lot you can do to work together. At one point, you know, businesses wouldn't work with others because they're competitors. These days you have to work with competitors as well and you will gain from that and it's a good way to grow. In January this year, I got presented with an opportunity to buy into a, a fantastic business um, with about 700 staff and I literally had to make an overnight decision as to whether I was going to invest in this or not because the jobs were at stake and the wages needed paying. And this business is in security. And I was thinking, what are you doing in security? <laughs> um, but it was a service provision. Um, I looked at the business model and I, and, I, and I looked at the books, I looked at everything, and I thought, actually, I can make a difference here. I know exactly what needs to be done. And the problem with this business, and it was really the credit crunch, the banks, the lending, fueling for extra growth, and unfortunately, they had relied on far too much invoice discounting without chasing the credit themselves. So, uh, and also relying on that rather than looking at profits and bottom line. And be very careful when you're chasing growth. 
it's really important to to keep um, sight of the bottom line. Turnover means absolutely nothing, nothing. This company is doing fifteen million pound turnover. At the minute we're making zero. We will be making money in about six months' time. What you need to keep sight of is the bottom line and profit. So I just want to leave you with um, a thought. So we're getting to the end. Um, s- success. I was going to say success in life isn't based on your ability to simply change. It's based on your ability to change faster than your competition, customers and business. So I've hoped you've enjoyed um, my story and I look forward to talking to some of you later. Thank you.